brains. Some people have them, zombies appear to like them, and Kodge claims to be an AI autopilot for your second one. What does that even mean? Well, let's find out. While Kodge isn't a new app, it has changed quite a bit and picked up a load of stars recently. With that being the case, I figured I'd take a look to see what all the fuss was about. Right then, what do they say here? It's open source and you can chat with it. All good so far. What else? Oh, it can reference documents you've provided, such as PDFs, plain text, markdown, and even GitHub repositories. Who doesn't like chatting with their documents? It's got some app integrations, and as no one wants to be uploading their documents to the intertubes, you can run it locally. Open source and local, great, but why would I use this over something like Uber Booger, Open Web UI, LM Studio, or any of the dozens of other applications already out there? Well, it turns out it's all in the name, as coach means search in Hindi, and that's exactly what it does, summarized into a single word that I can't pronounce. It's mostly focused around sharing and chatting with documents, and I think its key features are the integrations with things like Obsidian and Emacs, along with those automations. It's also pretty easy and certainly a load of fun. Why is working with documents fun? Well, imagine you're using chat GPT or whatever, but you've also set it to reference your entire 10-year collection of D&D &D campaign notes. Okay, now we're cooking with solar-powered lasers. Probably a good time to dive into this thing then to get a real feel of what it can do. This is the web interface. It's usually a blinding white, so I've dimmed things down a bit just with a standard browser plugin, hence the non-default colors. I'm running everything locally, though they do have a hosted option if you'd prefer. One of them is even free, but of course they've got other prices there as well. Do check out their website for more info. What are we doing again? Oh yes, that's right, running it locally for free. As such, it's probably also worth noting that it's surprisingly light on the old computing requirements. Their default model seem to run fine in around eight gig of VRAM, but of course it's also worth bearing in mind that running a local LLM like that won't be anywhere near as powerful as something like ChatGPT. Though, of course, if you've got an API key, then you can indeed use that. It starts with a standard intro like you can see there. That gives us lots of ideas and tips on the things we can do. We can get some answers to general knowledge, get real-time answers from the internet, search notes, and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. The image generation is the one thing I won't be running here as it doesn't run locally. It simply sends off requests to a DALI API. Not for me, it's all okay, but thank you very much. No, all right, so general knowledge then, as that's what they have first. Something simple to start with then, how about, um, what is the meaning of life? Now, if you look there, it's got a little thing that is going to disappear in just a second but I will freeze frame it so we can read it. So first of all, it's understanding the query. What is the meaning of life? It's then choosing some data sources and it's also deciding a response mode, searching some documents, inferring the web pages to read, reading those web pages, and now giving us the answer. So moving on here, we have the answer. The meaning of life is a profound philosophical question, etc., etc. It's also given us a couple of references. So if we click on that there, it's gone off to Google. There's a search it's done. And there's also a Wikipedia article on the meaning of life as well. So you can click on that and go and take a look. There are some special commands too, like it says there, which you can see by using the slash. So if we put that in, then they've got loads of options there. Default, general notes, help, online, web page, image, and automation. All right, so let's use one of those just to see how they work. And so for this, I'm using slash general, how does consciousness work in humans? Now, as you can see that time, it gave me an answer straight away. It hasn't gone off to the web. This is just a standard LLM response there. Consciousness is a complex and multifaceted phenomenon, etc., etc. Cool, I think I'm getting why they call it a second brain. So you've got your usual large language model that you can query and chat to, but it also has internet access. On top of that, it can access documents that I give it, sort of augmenting my search. All right, another question then. So this time I'm gonna ask it something completely made up. 
what is the twirly grizzler? Now, obviously, it's going to have a really good go at trying to answer it, but eventually it just comes out, oh, I don't have any information about what that is. All right, well, if it doesn't know, then perhaps if I give it this finely crafted document, which in this case is just a text file and has all sorts of information on the twirly grizzler. All right, so let's feed this in. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. The easiest way is just to drag and drop. So there I've got my Grizzler text, drag that on, and there we go, it's done. Now, there is a little indexing stage that might have popped up there very, very quickly, but because it's such a small text file, it just goes through it so fast. If you've got a larger object, it may take a bit longer, perhaps five or 10 seconds. And if you've got something massive, it could take a while. Now, another way to provide documents is to use their client app. Anyway, here's that optional app, which looks almost identical to the web interface. There you can see the chat we've just been having. But in this, if you go over to settings, there we go, we've got a server URL, that's localhost, API key, I'm just running it locally, anonymously, so anything in there. And now we've got a couple of options for files. So there you can add files and you'll get a little pop-up and you can pick what files you want. Or of course, you can add an entire folder, click save, and eventually it'll go through and index it all that way. Back to the web client then, if we do the same sort of thing, we go up here, go to settings, you'll see it looks completely different. Now you can put your name in there. So I've done that as well. Now you've got the files. So if I click update, we can see all the different files in there. Now I've got that grizzler.txt in there. So the description of the grizzler. Excellent. Now if I go back to chat, therefore, we'll copy and paste that question back in. And now when we ask the same question, hopefully it should be able to figure out what a twirly grizzler is. Yes, it's got the correct answer. The Twirly Grizzler is a fictional creature created by Nerdy Rodent and loads of other information about it. Obviously, it hasn't just given out that text file the same as I put it in. It's done its own little LLM twist on it. But there you go. It's nice. How is this better than something like a uh, grep, you may be wondering? And if you want an exact quote from a specific file, then it probably isn't, as these smaller large language models can get a bit confused sometimes. Of course, what you can't do with most other tools is ask questions from your document. Just for giggles, I've indexed part of my collection of Pathfinder rule books. If this can help me be a better dungeon master, maybe I could save some time flipping through manuals. Yes, I have the physical books as well. Yes, I'm a nerd. So here I'm asking for the Pathfinder spell secret chest. How much could a level nine wizard store inside? And there we have the answer. The secret chest can hold up to what? Up to three square feet of contents. A level nine wizard. Ha no, 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 no. None of that is correct. So for those of you at home that would like to turn to page 338 in the sixth printing of the core rule book, you'll clearly see that is not the correct answer. Oh, so does that mean I can't trust the answers it gives me even with local notes? Correct, never trust an AI and always do your own research. Does that make the whole app a bit rubbish then? No, because with a quick change of the language model, we should be able to get a much better answer. The one I'm using in this case is all of, oh, uh, files and versions one day old and it works straight away. So that's nice to know you can use any of these GGUF models. How many does that give you access to? Well, if I go to Hugging Face Libraries and click GGUF at the moment, there's just under 16,000 there. So quite a few things to choose from. I can change the model by going over to Settings. We'll pop down here. So we'll change from that default over to the new one, click save, and then I found that restarting the server helps, otherwise the model can get a bit confused. Okay, now I've restarted with the new model, let's try that question again. So for the Pathfinder spell secret chest, how much could a level nine wizard store inside? And this time we get a much better answer. Look at that, for the Pathfinder spell secret chest, a level nine wizard can store up to one cubic foot of material per caster level. Since the wizard level is nine, they can store nine cubic feet of material inside the chest. I think that's about the right answer. 
It can do a bunch of other things as well. So we've got agents up here. You've got one by default and you can create your own. That's basically just where you give it a personality. Search will let you search through things using natural language. So if you've got a document with smile or something like that in, you could maybe put happy and that would find it too. Automation, it says, is a preview, but you can set up things in there as well. Okay, so talking of setups, it's probably time to look at the installation and configuration. Thankfully, they have a load of documentation, so be sure to check their website for the very latest. Here, we've got some information on self-hosting. I suggest installing Anaconda, as that will give you both Python and PIP, along with a whole load more. Check the links in the video description if you need help on installing Anaconda. So you've got two options for the local install. Your option one there is Docker, and option two, the one I chose, is the local install. Now there is a little problem with the Docker one, which is why I didn't use it. If you want to use the offline chat and you have a GPU, you should choose option two because the Docker one doesn't support it. Okay, step one then. First up, you will need to install Postgres. Now obviously there's different instructions depending on your operating system, so click on the tab which is appropriate for you. I'm on Linux, so I ran these commands for the Postgres install. And the Postgres service is running. Okay, so the next thing they say to do over here is create the database. You can just copy and paste that in. Let's pop that over. We'll paste that one in now. Of course, I've made it already, so it'll say, yes, that already exists. Now, one little note here, in order for the app to run, it looked like it was trying to use the Postgres user, which doesn't typically have a password when you install it using the instructions I just put on the screen earlier. So if you've installed Postgres and you get something similar, you try and start it up and it goes, oh, Postgres hasn't got a password, then you probably want to do this, which is basically log in to Postgres, there we go. And then you can give Postgres a password using the alter user command like that. Whether it would be the same on macOS or Windows, absolutely no idea. Step three then is installing the actual package itself. And we've got a load of different instructions there. Now, of course, as this is Python, I would highly recommend creating a new virtual environment for it using Anaconda. So there, Conda create, and I'm using Python 3.11. And as always, once you've created your environment, don't forget to activate it. Right, so back to the instructions. You've got four different options for the type of install you want there, four separate commands, either CPU, CUDA, ROCKM, or Vulkan. So pick the one which is relevant to your hardware. Now, do notice there is a little mistake here on the NVIDIA line. Those have got like minus D, minus D, that hasn't got the minus. You do need the minus in there if you're running that NVIDIA command. There it is then, the one that I used, and I've included the hyphen at the beginning. So that'll get you the assistant and everything installed. Step four is sort of optional as it will prompt you for this information in step five anyway, but hey, go ahead and set the username and password now for your admin account. These details will be saved, so you only need to set those environment variables once. And then finally, the last step there is just to start the server. So once again, you can copy and paste that in. There we go, and start up the server. Now, the very first time you run it, you will be prompted to input credentials for your admin account if you didn't set them in the environment variables earlier, and also some basic configuration as well. So the configuration questions it will ask you, do you want to use offline chat? For that, of course, I said yes. Which hugging face model do you want to use? I just used the default. Do I want to use an open AI model? I said no. Do I want to use offline speech? I said yes. Uh, and that set up whisper models for me. And once again, I just used the default base. And there it is, once you answer those questions, you're good to go, and that will basically get you ready in there. So that's all the default setup, but you may want to add things like agents or those models. Now for that, if we go back to those instructions, you'll need to go to this admin interface. So you can click that link, and then as you can see, there are absolutely loads and loads of options in there. All right, looks a bit complicated, but don't worry about it. Click on agents, You'll have one there that exists already. So if you click on that, you'll see how to set up an agent there. It's got the name, 
personality, avatar. Now for avatar, it does seem to need a URL. I couldn't get it to use a local file. Could be me. Maybe it just doesn't support it. And then you've got a bunch of other options at the bottom. Public, managed by admin, which chat model you want to use and a slug. So chat model, exactly the same sort of thing. So you can go over to there, have a look at the one they've got already. As you can see, chat model there. Oh, it's just got the basic name that you had from the top. So if we go back there, you can copy and paste that. And that is the information you would put into the chat model. Model type, that's offline or open AI. So if you have got an open AI key, you can set that up in here as well. There you go. So just by looking at the defaults, it makes it really easy. So you can add a new chat model. For example, I happen to copy and paste that. There we go. So that's adding a new chat model. So once you've added your new model like that, if you go back into settings, you should see it appear in there. You may need to do a refresh. And then once you hit save, it will look like maybe it hasn't done anything and it hasn't. So you need to restart it and then it will download the model the very first time you used it. But then I find it's best if you also restart it again after the download before your very first use, and then it's usually good to go. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go through every option there as there are absolutely loads. And of course, they've got some excellent documentation for you to explore. There's loads of different features in there. And you can see image generation, offline search, shareable chat, voice. Yep, that's right. You can do voice as well. I didn't show it here, but I can do it now. OK, so you've got a little thing there. Now, the one thing is it doesn't show you your speech as you speak which is a little bit annoying, but okay. So uh, now of course the first time you do that, you will need to allow access to your microphone. So let's allow that. Um, what is the meaning of life? There we go. So it caught the last little bit of my sentence there. What is the meaning of life? And you can carry on. So you can speak to it as well. Anyway, so if you enjoyed that video, a little step into the world of AI, maybe you'd like this next video too. Cheers for watching mate, it's you who makes the channel great, nerding out its rodents.